Okay, so if you're thinking of selling your home, what are things that sellers want to know, right? And this is how you're going to shape the message to the market on social media, right? The message that you're putting out. So what I'm seeing in the chat right now is they want to know the value of their home, how much money they can get, how long does it take to sell a home? What's the cost of selling the home, right? Commission, commission, um, repairs, what repairs should you do, updates? How do I sell my home and buy the next home, right? Those are all great, great things, right? How are you going to get me the most money for the home? Transfer tax, capital gains. So if, if you just uh, copy and paste all of this, these are all your videos for the next 12 months, right? Every single one of those topics is a video that you can do. A short, simple, educational video on, let's say, finding the value of your home, right? If you're thinking about selling your home, this is how I would start the video. Hey guys, if you're thinking about selling your home and you want to figure out what the value, this is the most, what the value is, this is the most accurate way to find the value of your home, right? Hey, I'm Enrique, PRG Real Estate, EXP, and then I'd break it down, right? There's a couple of different options you have when trying to figure out the value. You can go online, right? You can go to Zillow, you can go to Redfin. Let me tell you the pros and cons of using those and let me tell you what to look for if you're going to go on Zillow to find the value of your home. Step number two is you can have someone like me, a licensed agent, come out there and do a formal evaluation, right? Um, let me tell you what goes into that. What do I do when I come out there? Step number three is you can hire an appraiser to come out and do a you know, formal appraisal. And let me tell you what they're going to do. These are your three different options. Some of them have costs. Some of them are free. You break it all down for them. Make it super easy to understand. Don't get too complicated, too detailed. Make it really surface level. And then at the end, hey, if you're looking to find the value of your home and you want to get a more you know, thorough analysis, send me a message. I'd love to help you out. Bam, that's a video. I just, someone should have recorded that. That could have been a video and I could have posted that on social media. Right? So, and then you go to the other thing. What are the costs of selling your home, right? So if you look in the chat, people want to know how much it costs, how do commissions work? Just do a quick video breaking down commissions. When you're selling your home, seller pays commissions. This is how it works. This is the range of what you might see. This is, you know, what you might see on the buyer side. This is what you might see on the seller side, right? And that could be one video right there, right? Then you could even break down like what services are offered when you're selling your home and you're using an agent, right? These are the different services we do. These are services that I've seen other teams do. Boom, boom, boom. So you get what I'm saying, guys, is the message to the market. It's all about selling, right? Getting your home sold. How do capital gains work, right? Hey, here's, I'm not, an, I'm not a tax expert, I'm not an attorney, I'm not a CPA, but here's a basic understanding of how it works, but definitely consult your CPA. And you can pull something from Google and just read it and explain it, and that's it. So what you're doing though, guys, is you're sending this message out there and the people who are thinking of selling their home, they're the ones who are gonna wanna watch those videos, right? But if, you're, if your cousin's thinking about selling their home, and you're putting videos out about getting pre-approved, about buying, they're probably gonna skip that video because that's just not what they're looking for, right? People will genuinely, uh, will tend to click on stuff when their radar is up because that's what they're looking for, right? If you're thinking about buying a car and a car ad comes by on Instagram, you're gonna click on it. If you're not in the market to buy a car, you're probably just gonna overlook that, thing, right? So, the number one thing, guys, is the message that you're putting out there to the market on social media, it has to match what you're looking for. If you want buyers, keep putting out more buyer messages. If you want sellers, you gotta put out seller messages. Um, now, how do you leverage what you're already doing to generate listing opportunities? We're super buyer heavy, right? We're like 85% buyers in our business. Last year we did over 200 transactions, 80 to 85% were buyers, which means we're already out showing a bunch of homes. When you're out there showing homes, can you take that opportunity and create some sort of marketing or a video around a home that you're showing, but geared towards a seller? Someone asked, someone said a topic was the ROI of repairs and updates. So you can walk into a home that's been beautifully staged, marketed, repaired, and you can do a video showcasing like this is a good way to market your home 
they did the countertops. This is why you want to do your countertops. This is how much it would cost you. This is how much you're going to get back, right? So you can show a great example of a home being marketed properly. And then you can go show a crappy home and you can show a bad example, right? And yet that could be a video that you put out there, right? Where you're educating the client. You're already out there in the field showing homes, right? So you're already going to meet your buyer who's going to show up. You show up 10 minutes early and you do a quick two minute video in the house. You're already out there, right? So what I'm trying to get at, and I was telling Tahara, I don't want you to change. I don't want you to stop doing what you're doing. I want you to now do these little add-ons, right? To what you're already doing, right? Add these extra, maybe one or two extra steps. And now you utilize that to try to find listing opportunities, right? Now, another thing is the market right now, right? Super low inventory which means when you go show a home and your client really likes that home, what are the chances they're going to get that home? Pretty slim, right? Um, right in the chat, either, how good. many offers right now would you say on average it's taking before your client gets their offer accepted? How many do you have to write? Three. Four or five? So Aaron said three or four. Harold said four or five. Anybody else? What do you think? How many offers are you writing before you get one accepted for that same client? Two to three? Okay. So the general consensus is about three, right? It's kind of right in the middle. About three, let's say, plus or minus. Two to three as usual. Okay, now here's the next question. How many homes are you showing so that you can get to the offer table on two or three? How many homes do you have to show before you write an offer? Homes, homes to offer, right? Like I show 10 homes, they're gonna to wanna to write an offer on one, right? Or I show five homes, what, what do you think that number is? I would say like four or five, because if you're going on a tour, you know, for a given weekend, I think you would like to show like four or five homes that end up writing on one. Versus if I go out and show them two houses, I mean, they don't have a lot to compare to, but the chances are they're not gonna write on Unless they fall in love with one of them, right? But typically it's four to five. Okay, so yeah, and that's what some of you guys said, four to five, um someone said one all right zahara <laughs> calm down <laughs> That's, on average on average right on average you're probably showing four or five let's say five let's say it's a five to one ratio right you're showing five homes and from those five homes you're probably going to write an offer on one because if you're showing five homes that means you already um researched their criteria you narrowed it down you're only looking at areas that they're going to want to buy in you're only looking in the price ranges that they're going to want to buy in. Hopefully you guys are just showing some crazy homes and it's not even in their criteria, right? I think we're past that. Um, but I would say it's maybe about five. Let's say five is a good number. Five homes that you show to every offer. So that means you're out there showing five homes for sure to a client. And we just said it takes two, three offers or so. So that means you're going to show probably 15 homes and you're going to write three offers and probably get one accepted. So it's good that you know these things so that you can kind of do the math, right? You can do the math in different ways. You can say, hey, if I just show 15 homes, for every 15 homes I show, I probably get an offer accepted. And then you can track your activities, right? And this is now going on a different tangent, but you can say, hey, I can track how many homes I'm showing this week. If I show 15 homes this week, I'll probably get one in contract, right? And then you can grade how, how much you're working. But for the purpose of finding listings, is we already know when you go show that home that it's a slim chance they're going to get that home because it's a very competitive market. The inventory is low. So what if you're going to meet them at this home, you showed up 15, 20 minutes early and you go knock on the three homes to the right and the three homes to the left. Or you bring your junior agent with you or your showing agent and hey, you go hit those three. I'm going to go hit these three and we're going to show the one in the middle. All right, you're already out there showing homes. You already know that the chances are your client is not gonna get their offer accepted, right? Just because of the market. But you already know they like that street. You already know they like that area. You already know that that's probably in the price range that they're looking because that's the home that you narrowed it down to. So if you went out there with like a little pre-printed little postcard, you could do it here, a little, some little flyer. Hey, I'm Enrique. 
my client is looking for this home. I'm showing your next door neighbor's home because the market's so tight right now. Most likely we may not get an offer accepted, but they really love this area and they really love your street. If you've ever thought about selling your home, please give me a call. I have a pre-approved buyer up to this price. Um, you know, Tom and Jerry, the family, right? Like paint this quick story, write a small little paragraph. Here's my number. Um, I'd love to chat and see if maybe they can give you an offer on your home, right? They're willing, they're willing to be flexible, whatever it might be, right? There's a script, Tony has a letter, you guys can make something up. It doesn't have to be rocket science, it's just a simple letter. You're already out there showing homes. Just show up 10 minutes earlier, hit the three to the right, three to the left. Maybe you're running behind, you hit the two to the right, two to the left. Maybe you hit one and one, I don't know, but it's that two more opportunities that you put out there, two more shots on goal, that you didn't put out before. While you're already gonna, you know you're gonna show 15 homes to that client before you get their offer accepted. So let's do the math, right? You're gonna show 15 homes to this client to get their offer accepted. You're gonna hit three to the right, three to the left. So that's six homes times 15. Harry, you're the math guy, bro. 15 times six. Um, 90. 90. 15 times six is 90. Harry just told me that. I don't check his math. That means while you're working with that same client, the same client that you're already going to show homes to, you hit 90 doors for potential sellers where you have the buyer and you could possibly double end that deal. I hope some of you guys' wheels are spinning and the light bulbs are going off, right? Because if you want to get listings, guys, it's just a matter of focus. What you focused on is what you're going to get, right? You tailor your videos and your marketing or you mix in now seller videos, right? I wouldn't completely take out buyer videos. I would do a buyer tip, a seller tip, and a market update. Because that's what everyone wants to know. Buyers want to know how the market is. Sellers want to know how the market is. Buyers want to know tips on buying. Sellers want to know tips on selling. While you're out there showing the home, you hit the three to the right, three to the left, or you bring your assistant with you or your showing agent or your partner, or your co-agent, whoever's on the deal with you, and they handle that while you're showing the home, you guys tackle it together. For that client, you're going to come back with 90 sellers that you went and dropped the letter off to, or some of them are going to answer, right? You're going to have a great conversation with them, and then you try to book a listing appointment. Hey, guys, you know what? And, you, and then you act like you got to go, right? Because you don't want to sound like desperate. You're, hey, I'm here right now. My clients are actually going to be showing up. I'm going to be showing this home. It's a really small chance we're going to get our offer accepted because there's so much competition. Your home would be a great fit for them. Can I come back on another time? And can we walk through it? Or can I walk through it and come talk to you guys? You know, if you guys are thinking of making a move. Well, and you think about this, right? Anybody who owns a home is a potential candidate to sell their home. Anybody. If you're a homeowner, you probably might sell your home one day. Just think about that now, right? Let's just, if you own a home, you will sell your home one day. The question is, are you going to sell it with me? And am I going to stay in touch with you long enough so that you don't forget about me and you sell your home with me? Now we're going back to the simple things you do every day of follow-up, right? You won't know till you ask. So what I'm trying to get at, guys, is the way we are going to get more listings this year, it's not this magic bullet, this magic lead gen, you know, this magic thing that we're going to do that's going to get us more listing business. It's shifting our focus and opening our eyes to the opportunity that's already in front of us. Right? If you just add this to your business, right? And what you're already doing. Now would think about think about the highest return on 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 your time. The highest return on your time as a salesperson is what? What's the highest 
return on your time as a salesperson? We sh if we had to just break it down to one thing, prospecting. is it prospecting? Let's see in the chat. Writing offers, nope. The highest dollar producing activity, someone said it, closing. Being in front of somebody. Being belly to belly in front of someone where there's an opportunity for you to close, right? That's the highest and best use of your time because it's proven, right? The more people you get in front of, the more business you're going to close. Even if you suck, but Louie got in front of 100 people and you only got in front of 20 that month, even if Louie is not that good, he just he got into, in front of five, five times more people than you did. Right. If he just knows the basics, which everyone in here knows the basics, right? At least the basics. It's consistency, right? So the highest and best use of your time is just getting in front of somebody where there's an opportunity. Right? Like if I want to recruit more agents, I just got to get in front of more agents who are recruitable. Right? That's it, right? Who have a license and you know I can show some value to. If I want to, if I want to sell, get more listings, I got to get in front of more sellers. Some of us are looking for like this magic, right? Like I'm going to do this online thing and it's going to do this. And it's going to like, um, anybody follow Kevion? Super high listing focus, does mostly listings. He will tell you I am the most old school guy ever. I don't do Zillow. I don't do technology. I don't even have a CRM. I got a freaking Excel spreadsheet. I build my business off a of door knocking. He was mentored by Thatch, right? Thatch is all about door knocking, but that's it. They just get in front of people. But what Kevion does is he took door knocking to another level, right? He door knocks luxury properties, which most people don't. And then he takes a team with them. So they'll go hit a whole neighborhood and they'll go hit a whole neighborhood when they have a buyer that's looking to buy in that neighborhood. So now they're like layering what they're doing, right? It's not like we're going cold and just say, hey, you want to sell? It's like, no, I actually have a buyer. And what do we have more of right now than any other freaking team out there? We have more buyers. So like, think about this. We, one second, we have the buyer. We have a ton of buyers coming in every single day, 4,800 leads that came in last year and 80% of those were buyer leads. We need to connect those with more sellers. Just connect the dots. That's it. Louis. Um, if you are dealing with buyers in this market that uh, is very, very, very slow, and like what you said earlier, nine times out of ten, you're going to get what you want. Chances of your offer being accepted or not it will depend on how solid your offer is. Mm -hmm. So, my question to you is anticipating that and doing the offer. Is there a magic formula on how to, to up the offer so that it will be more uh, uh, encouraging for the seller to look at? In other words, you know, if the house is, so, is listed for 1 million and then you want to get that, that, uh, that deal, what is the magic formula? 1.2, 1.1 in order to sweeten the offer? Is there yeah. a formula? Uh, honestly, right now, like when no one's figured that out, no one's figured out the formula um, because the market is so unpredictable right now where every week, like a new comp is setting the bar. Um, and it's even, even when we look at data and say, okay, that last home sold for a million, we're going to go, the market's been going up X percent. It's some, it's a lot of times it's getting blown out of, out of that water. Right. And we're like kind of on uncharted territories. Um, so yeah, there's unfortunately I don't I, there's no magic formula right now. Yeah. And then also the dialogue with the listing agent, right? So making sure we're in touch with the listing agent, trying to make friends with them. A lot of times we get offers accepted because we make friends with the agent, and once they get all the offers in we're able to get information out of them of where the offers are standing and we're able to come in and try to beat the highest offer. Yeah. And let the, let the buyer know, hey, listen, if you want this house, you got to offer one, three, five. How do I know this? I'm still the Yeah. Right? Okay. 
Yeah. So it's, it's more of a it's more of a feel and like a sales thing than than and the data does you know it's kind of established as some sort of benchmark, but there's no exact formula. Yeah, see that and there's no way to predict that, right? That's just supply. Yeah, but NCC would really be a million, right? So I can list, like, we can get a list tomorrow and list it for a dollar, but if the cost is selling for 1.5, we're going to sell 1.499 over this price, right? So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just marketing at that point. So yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, we have a, Tony had a something. Do you want to un unmute there? Um, Alexa Lee? Tony. Yeah, I used that tactic last night, uh, leverage the buyers um, while we do the buy console for one of uh, our buy in three months. We have delivery, we have uh, uh, Irene in the car. So we use that tactic. I throw in the uh, Slack and say how many buy we have in three months that especially uh, the district that you know, we in. And instantly I show that to the buyers possible we have another off market listing i'm gonna we're gonna meet up with them this afternoon at five o'clock so it's work actually <laughs> there you go guys so you see this it's already happening it's already working right it, it, the key thing guys with the key takeaway guys is it's focus right it's what are you focusing on right and being consistent and trying to look at your business, okay, like what am I doing today and where can I create some listing opportunities while I'm already out there doing what I'm doing, right? Um, it's working smarter, not necessarily harder, but working smarter with what you're already doing, right? So social media, changing your message on social media, um, hitting the, the houses around where you're already showing homes to since you're already out there and you have an actual buyer, right? It's a lot more powerful when you have a buyer and you're approaching a potential seller than when you just, you don't, and you're just making stuff up, right? If anybody's ever called for sale by owners and you're trying to book an appointment, it's a whole different conversation when you actually have a buyer that's interested in their property, right? Um, so leveraging that. The other thing guys is like direct mail. I know Tony's been doing this. I know there's other people that do this. Kevion does it, whether you're sending mail directly or whether you're just out there door knocking and you have that letter, it doesn't matter, right? So you're getting this in front of the in front of the seller, um, sending it in the mail. Um, there's more leverage, right? Because you can print out a hundred flyers, you can put them in the mail, pay for postage, and send them out. But then what comes into play is open rate. Is our people opening your letter? So that's where I'm being strategic on like, are you handwriting it? Does it look like a regular letter? That's where all that comes into play. Because sometimes you can send a hundred letters and like half of them go in the garbage right um so you got to be strategic on that the people that i've seen that are having success they do some sort of like handwritten envelope type of deal or it's like a laser thing that writes like a handwritten thing or you could just handwrite them yourself right if you don't want to invest into it and you have you want to spend an hour of just printing them out and handwriting the things you can do that too and then while you're out there you can drop them off but Nothing beats also just getting in front of a live person because then you have all these other factors that come into play, like your personality, your ability, you know, to say like, oh, you know, that's a nice plant you have, right? And you, you, you recognize that thing and you guys, you know, click on that thing, right? And nothing beats that. A letter is just a letter, right? So if your letter is not extremely compelling, there's not, there's no person behind it, right? So you have to send a lot more letters out that has to be done like on mass scale to get the same result as door knocking and just meeting someone face to face. One costs more money, one provides more leverage, one is probably more quality and more effective, but it takes more of your time. So um, I would start at, go out there and just do it on your own first. And then let's say you're doing it on your own and it's working, you're getting some, making some money off that. And then you wanna invest into now just doing this at scale and throwing in, you know, sending out mailers, then you take it from there. Um, but since you guys are already out there and we have what we have right now, guys, if you look here, we got, we got strength in numbers. We got people, right? It'd be really hard to do this at scale. If there's only like two or three people in our group, right? We got 30, 40 people that are now consistently showing up. So, 
and you guys got squats. So if you guys are like, hey, we, if you get with your squats and you say, hey, who are the hottest, highest price point buyers that we got? Those are the ones where it's worth it to go door knock the neighbors. The $500,000 one in, um, you can even buy a house for 500,000, but um, in Modesto, I don't know, right? That's not the one you're gonna wanna door knock. The $2 million one in San Mateo, if you could even find something, that's the one you wanna door knock. The $5 million one you got, that's the one you're gonna wanna door knock, right? Now you're, you're increasing your, your ROI, your return on investment for your time spent, right? So, and squad leaders, like you're out there showing homes, this doesn't necessarily have to be you door knock, right? If you guys are collabing on deals and you have a showing agent helping you show or it's a partner on your deal, they could be the one doing this also, or you guys both do it together or you hit one and they hit another one, right? So you can feel free to get creative. Um, but this is where like using the team, right? And like us leveraging each other, we can get a lot more done and hit a lot more people in the same amount of time. The last thing I'm gonna close with guys for this is you can do all of this. If you do all of this consistently, you will get leads, not sales. They start off as leads. Because you may meet, you may knock on that on that guy to the right, and he may say, "Yeah, I am looking to sell, but I'm not looking to sell until the next year. Yeah. I'm not looking I'm not to sell for six months." Or, man, that does really sound enticing. But you know what? Time is not right for me. Yet. So the bottom line out of all of this stuff, and this is where most people go wrong, is you gotta follow up with people. If this is not when you're looking for sellers and you're looking for listings, it's not like buyers where they click a button, they're ready to buy, they're ready to go look at homes today and they're ready to transact today. <clears throat> I would say with 99% of sellers, there's always a timeline that comes into play. And that's where people, that's, this is where people mess it all up. What you're doing is you're, through all these efforts, you're going to build a pipeline of leads that you have to nurture and follow up with. Because it doesn't matter if you do a thousand mailers a week or 10,000 mailers a week, or, you know, there's guys that we know that are doing 30, 40,000 mailers in a month. I guarantee you they're getting the phone to ring, but I guarantee you most of those people aren't ready to do something right now. So you spent all this money or you spent all this time or you door knocked all these doors and you've got these people, but most sell it because selling is, it's a big deal, right? You can't just sell a home in one day. If I wanted to sell my home right now, that's like, that's going to take a few months. I got to clean up. I got to clean my garage out. I got to put stuff in storage. Am I going to stage? Am I going to repair? Where am I going to go? Right? All of these things. It's not something where you're going to meet someone they're ready to sell right now. Now, if I was looking to buy, that means I've already got all that stuff sorted out and I want to buy and I want to go look at a home today. Right? So that's the big mindset shift is that the seller game is more about nurturing and building that relationship and staying in, in touch with these people and staying top of mind so that when they're ready to sell, they make it happen. Some of the, like the listing, I got two listings coming up right now. I've been, I've been in touch with her for it's probably been like a year now. The first six months of it was just nurture, nurture. And then finally, okay, let's get a contract signed. And then now we're in the contract sign. There's two houses, right? They got to get the people out. So now we're six months in of trying to get the people out, right? And then by the time the people get out, we got to fix the properties up and then get them on the market. So that whole time start to finish for those two listings from when I first got the lead to when it's actually going to go on the market over a year for sure. Um. Are you going to get lucky once in a while? Like, yeah, I am looking to sell. If you can give me 1.8, I'll sell right now. You know what? For some reason, you knocked on my door at the right time. I was actually, I'm already packing. You guys see the boxes? <laughs> once in a while in a blue moon, that does happen. I've seen it happen, but not always. It's very unlikely. Um, any questions, comments, put them in the chat. Yeah, we're going to go to that right now. All right, guys. So this concludes this little training right here on finding the listing opportunities. Hopefully you got some nuggets out of it. 
this will this recording will be in the uh, on the YouTube as well.